for me, Chekhov is the second great master of the drama in the world after Shakespeare. This one's from Paris. <laughs> I'm done with Paris. <laughs> At the centre of the play is Madame Ranevskaya. I mean, she's a widow, but she's been in Paris living with a lover for five years. Uh, and she returns to Russia to her estate. She has an option, which is to sell the cherry orchard for redevelopment, actually, for holiday villas. It sounds terribly modern, actually. But this is, this is kind of intolerable to her notion. So in, in the end, well, I better not tell you what happens in the end. It's time I was going. You might take your... However ludicrously they behave, you can feel a, a tenderness and, a, and an affection for all of them. So you care about them, even though they make you laugh, because they do do some ludicrous things, and they do behave in extraordinary ways. Greedy guts. <laughs> Dreadful and generation, too, like half a bucket of pickles. What's he saying? He's been mumbling like that for three years now. We've got used to it. We are digging deep into the characters, making them really live on stage. The case was made exactly a hundred years ago. Uh, oh, come on, Sharma, let's show us a conjuring trick. Yes, do, Sharma, show us a trick. No, I can't. Well, I'll show you a little trick. It's an intensely personal family story, but it also does relate uh, to what was happening in Russia at the time, the, the failure of the aristocracy. And this is 1904, what is going to happen 10 or 15 years later. Chekhov seems to have to some degree foreseen there is going to be a great change. Indeed there was. It was a wonderful period to design because it is the last few years before the First World War, so it really is a bygone era. We've got to track that descent into simplicity and necessity as the family realise that their time is up on the estate and they've got to move on. If we move from these beautiful, beautiful silks and things, we've got this eventual, rather sad progression to functional cottons when the fortunes start changing. You put on the wrong trousers again. It's far from being gloomy, it's, it's great fun. There are lots of laughs. It's kind of wacky. In, in many ways, for me, it's the Russian eight ball. It's, it's infinitely complex, really. We're dealing with real, real people who've got real emotions. Drawn from <laughs> Chekhov's own experience, definitely. Yeah. He was a doctor, he met an awful lot of people. It's very funny. It's really funny. And there is some poignancy in it, but it's, it's more funny than anything else, I think.